Hello, everybody. Welcome back into the LFC Transfer Room. It's a rare stream appearance from the man, the myth, the legend, Charlie. We'll be joined by Dan in just a moment. I'm Jack, as always. Um, you know, Charlie, it's been a... Uh, for me, it's been weird because I've kind of just avoided social media as much as I can since the United match. I don't. I, you, you kind of have less of ability to do that. And people in the UK, I'm sure, talk about you know, probably like a lot more than they do in the United States. So I could escape it for at least two days since that result. How have you been holding up since that match? Oh, look, I think after the, I, I did an absolutely terrible idea. So when the game happened, I, I was up until like five in the morning, the morning of, and I woke up at about 6 p.m. UK time. So the game was straight away. And then I was up all night after the result. So it, it was... No, it wasn't that bad because I feel like a lot of people just went to bed straight after the game. They were just like, I'm just not dealing with this. So it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I think the blow-up of the game has been justified. We're going to discuss into it a lot. But, you know, it. I think people are getting a bit fed up. I mean, obviously, I haven't been on a channel for probably coming up two months now. So if, if you're a new viewer, you might not recognise me. But, you know, I, I'm... I do flip. I'm I'm very, you know, look, I was turning on Salah a few months ago, but, you know, I, he's back in my good book, so it is what it is. But, look, it, it, it's, I'm getting tired of the excuses from Klopp, and I don't know if I'm to blame FSG or Klopp. I'm not FSG out. I think FSG out's a bit extreme at the mm -hmm. moment. I think I'm FSG fucking do more, but I'm not FSG out, so it's, you know... But regarding the blow up at a, at a United game, I think most of it's justified. I think people just want a midfielder, which we're going to obviously discuss today. It's not like there's no options out there, Jack. You know, all the transfers that have happened this window, you know, Fabio Vieira, Vitinha, you know, we've been linked with the likes of Octavia um, in past, Onana. We were linked with him, you know, they're just the ones off the top of my head, too. And yeah. there's even more that are still available. So, yeah, I think the blow up's been not as bad as I predicted. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a bit of an iffy one, but hey, -ho. It, we will discuss it tonight. It is transfer central. Um, I'm gonna go for about 40 45 minutes here today, talk about some midfield targets. Um, good to see some of the regulars, Nisa. I, I totally agree. It's I, I was made fun of quite a bit because it game ended around five p.m. my time, and I couldn't go to bed. I had to kind of just like stew in anger for the rest of the day. Good to see you, Gary. Good to see you, Jen. As always, um, make sure to drop any suggestions you have midfielder wise in in the comments, and make sure you subscribe to the channel as well if you have not already liked the video for the stream today. Um, and you know, I think that you know Kenpachi makes a very good point here. Only by the right players and then defining the right player. My bar, we'll talk about our, our bars before we get into specifics, Charlie. What's your bar for the right player? What's your bar for a player you think could improve this midfield? It's not hard to improve this midfield at the moment, simple as. You know, we I've I've talked about it a hell of a lot. You know, we it's not it's it this it's not been a mystery heading into this season. You know, let's let's look at the, the injured midfielders who we've got at the, all, all of our midfielders at the moment. We've got James Milner, 30, 30, what, 38, 37? 37. Jordan Henderson, what, 33? Pushing wow. at least a minimum 33. Being past his best for a very, very long time. Alex Oxley chamberlain not good enough injury prone. Naby Keita, on his day, great injury prone. Thiago Alcantara, one of the best midfielders in the world. Unfortunately, he's injured half the season. You know, um, Fabinho, yeah, very good. Yeah, you can't really complain about him. Harvey Elliott, very young. He played three games and broke his ankle, you know, and you're throwing him straight into the first team. Fabio Carvalho, again, 19, not really a midfielder. Um, Stefan Bacetic, you know, Bacetic, 17 years old. The fact that we're even thinking about playing a 17 year old in midfield. And Jurgen Klopp said, he literally said before the window, he was, he, about two weeks ago, he was like, Why do we need a midfielder? Look at all the midfielders we've got. Yeah, Klopp, look at all the midfielders we've got. They're all fucking injured. <laughs> you know, it, it, it doesn't take a rocket science scientist to, to look at our midfield before the season started and you're thinking 60%, 70% of them players. Are picking up an injury 
that's keeping them out of the team for at least four weeks in the whole season. And guess what? We're not even two weeks into it. We're, we're three weeks into the season and 80% of them are already injured. You know, it's it, it, it's a joke at this point. And the fact Klopp is defending it, you know, we need yes, back Klopp. Don't be delusional. Don't back Klopp when he's clearly wrong. You know, I, I, I guess stick for that, but I, I'll, I'll die on the hill. Mm-hmm. It's it, You can't look at our midfield and think, that's a title winning midfield. You just, you can't. Maybe maybe four years ago, not now. No, no. So Jen, thank you very much for the two pounds. And usually with super stickers, you can ask questions and, and get into the chat. You usually don't. So I'm going to take this opportunity to ask you a question. You are, you know, dominant on the Jude Bellingham next summer. He's coming no matter what happens. But two things for you, Jen. Do we need a midfielder now? And who do you think? Who do you want right now? If you're in the position of making a decision right now, because knowing that Jude is coming next summer, in your eyes, I'm interested in what what your thoughts are there, Jen. Um, let's break into very quickly, very very quickly. Kate to Dortmund that was shot down by, oh, who was it? Florian. Florian Plettenberg. Yeah, but he, he was brought out this morning by the name is slipping my mind. Uh, CF. Bayern, maybe Christian Fork. Was uh, it a source as big as that? I was a big source. I'm pretty, yeah. Uh, oh no, no, he, he, he shot it down. Bear with me. I'm going through it now. Uh, blah, 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 it would be a long shot. Too. It was Maddock Mirror. It was, it was okay. David Maddock. So, you know, we've talked about Maddock, uh, David Maddock on this show before. He was at one point a very, very, very reliable Liverpool journalist. And Overnight, it seems he's lost the majority of his sources. Probably like a, a tier four Liverpool journalist. Moment. Look, sure, he's a nice guy, but I, look, I'll say it straight here: you, you you don't have any sources anymore, mate. And you know it, it's being shot down by you know Christian Fork, who isn't as crazy reliable, but Florian Plettenberg, one of the most reliable journalists. However, he is still saying that there will be movements on Navigator. Before the before the transfer window is over, he's still claiming that he's unhappy. So you know it's this sort of is going to happen there, but it doesn't look like it will be to Dortmund. Yeah, Keita, it does seem like a bit of a, a long shot to leave this window. Um, Dan about to join us in a second. Going to let him get his camera situation sorted down low. Um, it, it is very interesting on, on what we decide to do going forward. Um, I'm just going to wait for Dan before we kind of fully get into our our next one. I th- I've always been in the camp of Keita. I think offers us something. I don't think it makes sense to move him on. We need to sign a midfielder, and our squad registration doesn't even limit us from doing that. Um, so that that should be fine. Dan, I'm bringing you in now. I hope you're doing well. Dan, how are you? How's it going, guys? How are we? Uh, I mean, this, it's awesome. It's been a while since I since I've been here. So just get ready to talk about some players, some transfers, tons of things. What about you guys? How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Don't want to speak for Charlie. I think Charlie, you're saying your room's quite hot right now, something like that. Yeah, do you know what? It's a weird, weird look. I feel like every time I'm on here, I talk about the UK weather, but it's in a very weird state at the moment. Where I'm from, it was absolutely teeming it down, raining all morning, and then it's been hot, so it's been weirdly humid, and, and now it's really cloudy, so it's it's all over the shop, but it's, it's not as bad as it was a couple of weeks ago when it was like 40 degrees. So, you know, it's hard to complain now when, when we went through that. So let's get into our first big player that we're going to kind of focus our discussion on. There was the rumor from under an hour ago, according to Ben Jacobs, that Yuri Tielemans would be open to a move to Liverpool this summer. Um, brings in a, a whole host of things. He's got a, pl- a year left on his contract. Very intriguing option in the middle of the park. Charlie, I'll, I'll go to you first on that one. Um, I'm sure with all of these midfielders that we'll talk about today, it will be a case of he's a midfielder, he's a pulse, he, he's got a decent bit of technical skill, get him in. But when you're breaking down Tielemans, in an ideal world, is he an option for Liverpool for you? Look, Jack, I'm interested in Margot Robbie. You know, <laughs> that's, that's nice for you, Tielemans, you know. Uh, you're interested in playing for one of the best clubs in the world. Nah, really. You know, look, is he an okay option? Probably. He's probably a bit better than Jordan Henderson, you know. But the, the fee that's being blasted around is... You're looking at 35 million as a, a whole package, 
Um, I think Leicester won around around sixteen to twenty million up front, um, and and then a lot of add-ons. They obviously his contract runs out at the end of the season, and I think I think yeah you, you could sign him on deadline day for probably ten mil cheaper than than what they're they're quoting at the moment. I think they're trying to get a bit of more um, with the likes of uh, Arsenal are very interested in them. You probably wouldn't put it past Man United to to throw the hat in. You know, putting Liverpool's name in there is very, very easy for a journalist, considering the meltdown that's going on in the fan base. But look, would I say no to them? At the moment, I don't think I would. But when a big when everybody is fit, you know, I don't really want him stopping the pathway for Harvey Elliott, you know, or Fabio Carvalho. So. In an ideal world, no, I wouldn't want him. But I'm sort of in the boat. I just want anything at the moment because anything is better than Jordan Henderson and James Milner being our starting midfielders. Dan, Tillmans to Liverpool. Where do you kind of stand on the fee that could be paid and just him as a player? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm in the uh, general consensus that we need just midfielders at the moment. Um we did a, a poll earlier today uh, asking all the followers if the approach that Liverpool is taking regarding waiting until next summer till the right target arrives, which is obviously Jude Bellingham for $100 million, is the right one. Or if they would rather just get two players in in the $50 million valuation and just miss out on Jude Bellingham. And I mean, a lot of people agreed on, I believe more than 70% of the people actually voted that they want two midfielders that are less than 50 million worth uh, than getting Jude Bellingham. I mean, we just got into that point where <clears throat> Jurgen Klopp, since he arrived, he's been using Jordan Henderson, James Milner consistently in the starting lineup. And it's, it's understandable because they, they've worked out. I mean, we, we won the Champions League, we won the Premier League. Why would Jurgen even consider dropping them if it's still working? But there goes, there's a point where a team needs to start evolving and Jurgen Klopp is not taking that approach. It's not accepting, not getting the right target. And um, there's there's just times where that call for desperate measures, and this is one of them. If we miss out on Jude Bellingham, then so be it. And if Jury, uh, Jury Tillemans is one of the two or even three options that we can bring in just to make sure we're bringing this team to a next level, to evolving, then I will to totally be on the, on the boat. We've seen his stats. We've seen what he can do. He's been a target before. So why not just go in for him and maybe a couple more players? So I agree. You should totally go in for him. Tillman's entering his fifth season at Leicester. Um, it's the last year of his contract. The fee, Charlie, you know, is that the big roadblock for Tillman's to Liverpool in your eyes, or is it the player's fit? Um, you know, I don't know. Cause look, yeah, last season, he was linked away with a move. I think he tried to push for a move away, and it didn't happen which means he's fallen out of favour with with uh, Brendan Rodgers and, and Leicester. Dan's, Dan's just gone off for a little bit. They um, just walked off. But uh, look, at, it's always hard. And I, I feel like Leicester, uh, uh, look, they're, they're, pushed, you know, they're very shrewd negotiators, Leicester City. You know, I think they got, well, 50 million for Ben Chilwell. They got 80 million for Harry Maguire. They're probably going to get 85 million for... Uh, Wesley for Fauna, you know, they know how to get money out of clubs. I just think they're trying too hard to negotiate for Tillemans. I think he's at the point now where you just need to, they just need to let him leave because he's clearly not happy at the club. But, you know, going on to your main question, I, I don't see Liverpool paying 20 million for even 20 million you know it's going to be 35 million in add-ons them add-ons are probably going to be pretty achievable um as well it'll probably be appearance fees you know maybe going getting back into the belgium national team you know there, there'll be ones that less they're going to try and get as much money as possible so i, I just don't see liverpool paying that much if, look if it gets down to the end of the window all of our i think look the midfielders we've got none of them are coming back until until after the transfer window anyway. I know I know they've they've talked Curtis Jones has talked about coming back at the end of the month. You know, there's been conflicting reports. 
that he's not going to be back until mid September as well. Um, you've got uh, Nari Keita not even put a time scale on his injury, so that's going to be at least two months in my books for Nabi Keita. Tiago Alcantara to say in again, uh, mid September, not a chance, probably beginning in November. Uh, the, the Jürgen Klopp's lied at, before about midfield injuries, so I'd be very, very surprised. And look, wouldn't surprise me if Jordan Henderson picks up an injury in the next couple of weeks because he, he as well can pick up an injury and just be out. I, I know we're relying on James Milner. Look, I love James Milner, he's, he's a great rotation option. So, if it gets down to the final day of the window. And Leicester are like, all right, look, we are 50 million up front and we'll we'll get rid of them. Yeah, a hundred percent. It's just not a Liverpool deal, though, unfortunately, in, in my eyes, or fortunately or unfortunately, however, however you see it. Dan, I'm gonna go to you with this one. Um Charlie mentioned the midfielders that are out for so long um for us right now. How big a deal is it that he's a prem guy in the prem? So he's not gonna change countries, he can just come in. The, the as big a system changes it always is moving clubs it's got to be a decent transition if he was to come in he could be a starter i mean he say he signed tomorrow he might start on the weekend i mean i agree i mean that, that's a huge factor that we that we all know that it does take uh in, into account there's a lot of people there's, there's, there's a lot of players that, that simply just move to the premier league and suddenly start working uh they do wonders and whatnot but We've seen um, in other cases that that's not the case. I mean, Luis Diaz, despite being amazing, uh, you've seen how adjusted he became after four or five months under clock. Uh, Darby Nunez, uh, he seems like he's not settled in completely from his form in Portugal. You got, um, I mean, the, the cases of um, uh, Andrew Robertson, who also suddenly disappeared for what was it? like six months until he was fully adjusted to the Premier League and then finally came in and made his mark. I mean, they're just so many cases of this happening, but the fact that we have someone from the Premier League from a side where he is actually playing uh, a more defensive uh, approach, a more defensive role, uh, where he's safe to face the top uh, teams in the Premier League, it's just perfect because you know that you're going to bring him in, and regardless if he's adjusted to the team or not, you know that he's going to be giving you at least a half a decent performance. Uh, um, maybe he's not going to be scoring goals, maybe he's not going get, to get assists, but he will be helping you on the distribution front, on the defensive front, because that's what he's doing now and that's what he's always done. So um, it's definitely a plus. It's not the player that I would like to uh, I, I would like us to go for. Um, but if we do bring someone, I would totally agree that it has to be someone from the Premier League. Maybe not necessarily Jura Tielemans, but someone of, his, of the same liking. So moving from a player in the Premier League that Dan has just mentioned, 2-1 outside of the Premier League. Rumors are that Lucas Paqueta is nearing a move to West Ham for around 40 million euros. And, you know, this was um, something that I saw earlier today. You had mentioned, mentioned in the chat, Charlie. Um, and I did my classic, you know, FB ref test. I go to there, see what the, see what the green bars say. If they're glowing green bars and I'm angry, if they're red, I'm like, All right, you know, we're fine. We can, we can let them go. He's an option, Charlie. You know, at that price point, ready to, to come into the side like that. For you, Charlie, where did you stand on where do you stand on the Paqueta rumors? You're muted, Charlie, by the way. This is what a month out does for you. Not that mm -hmm. I definitely didn't do it before. But you know, look, I, I'll be the first to say these rumors being started by fans um uh, you know uh, coming to liverpool anyway he's, he looks set to join west ham which is baffling considering the fact that there's so many clubs that need a midfielder at the moment you know uh, arsenal not a clue why he hasn't got why arsenal haven't put their hat in for him he starts for arsenal um look he's a predominantly a bit more of an attacking an attacking midfielder um which maybe is the reason why we haven't gone for him for him but what have liverpool fans been crying out for since felipe coutinho left liverpool an attacking midfielder who can you know he can also play in eight the eight so that's that's not really a, a an issue not sure if he can play in the six i i assume not 
Um, but uh, Helios mentioned there, you know, Joyce has, has said this recently. I think it must have been happened when we were live. Um, mm-hmm. He said Klopp wants a, a number eight who can play as a number six. You know, Chiuameni, <laughs> he, he's describing Chiuameni there. Um, so, <laughs> look, it's, there's not many players at the moment who fit that bill, which is unfortunate. Um, still not sure why we didn't go after Onana, who Everton ended up getting. I think he would have been perfect. But Lucas Paqueta, you know, 24 years old. We we have a lot of South American speaking people in the squad. I don't know it's a bit of a cliche, but look, the, all the Brazilians know each other in football. They're all very close, especially the ones who are part of the national team. Um, so look, he comes straight in and he's. He comes in as a as you know someone who knows a lot of people, so it's it is baffling that we aren't in the the mix for him at the minimum. You know, forty million euros for your thirty four million pound. He comes in, he massively improves the squad. He probably straight away starts for us currently. Um, so it's it, it's crazy. I don't know how you feel about it, Jack, but. You know, someone with that much talent, the age, he's in that age bracket, that FSG and Klopp like to sign. You know, he's not the finished article. So, to me, it's, it's crazy that we're not in from at least. Yeah, he's he's played a very interesting position for this Leon side. You know, he's he's not a natural just eight. He's a bit, a bit of a 10. He'd be a different option. He would cause us to play a little bit differently. And, and you know... It really is just the case of it, it kind of makes a decent bit of financial sense. I mean, 33 million pounds was the fee tossed around by goal in a tweet I saw to West Ham. So we can offer Champions League football, play at Liverpool, and a great chance to get into the 11. Um, so, Dan, I'll, I'll toss it to you. Paqueta, uh, on that end for you, where do you stand on his potential side? So, um, I mean, Lucas Paqueta has been a player that I've been raving about for so many years. Uh, since he made his move to uh, uh, before Leon, where was he? Um, I believe he was always oh, he wasn't a Brazil in a, a Brazilian side or because I remember I did like a thread on the player because he was amazing and whatnot. So he was I, at he was at AC Milan, he, he struggled at AC Milan, yeah. He did bad at AC Milan and then he moved to uh, Leon, was it right? So, um, I remember I did a, I did, I did a thread on him and everybody was. I was like, no, if he's not making it in, in, in Italy, what makes you think that he's going to be doing good in the Premier League and whatnot? And uh, my case uh, to defend him was, al- was always that he needs the right system and the right coach to just take him to the next level. And that's what he did at, at Lyon. He went to a side that is, is known for having youngsters that uh, that become solid players and that are well-adjusted in the league. And now, obviously, he's ready to make the move to the Premier League. But um, I need to agree with something that, that uh, Charlie said, and is that he is more of an attacking profile, but I do not think that this is the right time for us to buy him. I think we need something, someone that is more of a solid number eight, dare I say it, a Wijnaldum type of player at the moment that is not Wijnaldum, uh, but just someone that you know that can offer you a little bit more of solidity in midfield. Okay, maybe can add you a little bit more of a attacking threat, but at the same time, someone that could be strong enough to defend is strong enough to maintain a stable line. So we need an upgrade from Henderson and Milner. That's what we need. We need a player that can do both things that they do while at the same time offer a little bit more up front, which, by the way, I happen to be right now in the country of one of the players that we're linked to that I think that we should actually sign, which is in Ecuador. But we'll get up. We'll get in that a little bit later. But, yeah, I don't think it's the right time to get Lucas Paqueta. I think we need a different type of player at the moment. We'll do a rapid fire with some names. I think the men you're insinuating, Dan, will be one of them. Um, you know, and, and actually going back to Halor's point, where did the Joyce thing come from? I went to his Twitter profile. There's not been a tweet because I saw it earlier today. He doesn't, he doesn't always tweet. Sometimes he just it, it just goes on the times. Okay. Um, I haven't saw that personally. I don't know if that's like brand new as well. Uh, but look, I I, I trust Helio. He, he's he's. He doesn't say stuff just to No, say I, stuff. I've seen that exact thing earlier today. It was like two hours ago. So it wasn't like it was just something that just broke now. So I, if you have any um, way to push me in that direction, hey, Lord, let me know. Um, yeah, Paqueta, for, for me, I, I kind of round out the discussion. 
I think he'd be a very interesting option. But right now our midfield, it got ran over by United, and it didn't have much attacking spark. So if we brought in Paqueta, our midfield would get run over, but it would have some attacking spark. I mean, granted, it's not a perfect solution, but I think he would be a nice right-sided eight where he's allowed a bit more attacking license, but he's not going to abandon the defensive duties that he needs. Dan, did you want to hit anything else on, on Paqueta? Yeah, I don't want to compare these two players, but I'm just going to say it just for the sake of it. But if you bring in Lucas Paqueta to the team, you're basically adding Harvey Elliott with a, with a little bit more dribbling ability and maybe more vision. So, I mean, or maybe a Fabio Carvalho. He's a similar type of profile. Obviously, Lucas Paqueta is more uh, maybe nice to the eye to see. But, I mean, you're not adding nothing different to a team at the moment. We need something else. We need size. We need... We need, we need someone strong. We need someone, and dare I say, we need some leadership in the team, man. Because what happens when you bench Jordan Henderson? i never seen Fabinho lead the line. i never seen um, Harvey Elliott, the young Fabio Carvalho. We need more leaders, man. Um, James Milner, he does incredibly well, but obviously he's not offering anything else to the team other than his leadership and maybe solidity in, in, in the defensive line. So... We need to bring someone that is willing to scream at the players. We need to bring someone that is also willing to prove to the team that he's, he, he needs to be in the starting lineup. So, uh, to be honest, I don't think Lucas Paqueta at the moment is the right profile. I would love to have him, but if we at least take care of other, other options at the moment that we need. I want to hit on one other midfielder in specific before we move on. There are some names in the title that we'll mention in a more rapid, quicker section. But it's a name that I, I since you know he hit my FB ref test, my very uneducated, just looking at the green bars, it's going to Conrad Lamer of RB Leipzig, a pressing monster out in Germany, is in the 99th percentile for pressures, 33 per match. That absolutely dwarfs everyone at Liverpool. It's about seven more per match than any player at top, that topped out for Liverpool last year. I'll, I'll go dig up the actual stat here in a second. In terms of a guy like... Lamer, who last year had a decent bit of goal threat, four goals, four assists in 26 Bundesliga matches, an insane presser, 25 years of age. He's linked heavily with Bayern Munich because he has a ups in his contract. But it would be the mid-20s in the Euros if you wanted to sign him. Charlie, I mean, it, what's the – is Bayern just also swarming as another shark, the big downside here? Or, or what am yeah. I missing on the, on the Lamer side of things? Yeah, I think he's he is very much um, – going to Bayern when his contract runs out. Um, I think multiple clubs have tried pushing for him. I think Dortmund as well at one point tried. Um, I think it's he's, and I think Bayern and Leipzig can't find an agreement. He said he'll play for Leipzig. Um, or he, he will, um, trying to think of the word, he'll fulfill his contract they won't have any issues with playing at Leipzig in the year but then he wants to join Bayern Munich honestly as well look when was the last time uh, a Bundesliga player came to the Premier League and became one of the best players in the Premier League I don't know if at my mind slipping somebody is so no. obvious no Thiago. not having it no Thiago yeah, t okay. Uh, t I'm not counting Thiago because he was a world class player. Look, like I got someone, I got who, and Holland doesn't Sane. count either. Larry Sane. No. Sane. Sane. Ooh, that's a good one. I think he he was a bit of a monster up front. I, against those, yeah, but you know, <laughs> no, but look, Charlie yeah, does he, have a point. I mean, it's, it's, there's just a few from the Bundesliga players that that come here that that made it. Um, so yeah, he does have a point. Is is the Bundesliga tax that great that you're not considering them though, Charlie? I I think it, it it's something you've got to think about, especially when we've spent like he's, he's our third most expensive player, also on Naby Keita, and he's he's just not the player that we thought we were going to sign. If that's due to if that's due to how Klopp has coached him, if he's changed how he wanted him to play, but. You know, it's it's not just Liverpool that this happens to either. You know, there's, there's other clubs who sign players from the Bundesliga, and they just again slip in my mind. You know, the worst time to to slip my mind, but it's you know, you look at Spanish league players, players who come from Spain usually do all right in the Premier League. 
you know, I feel like they're a lot less hit and miss. Uh, there's, look, there's, there's cases always where players are good and players are bad. But I just feel like in the Bundesliga, it's just, just so many more. Um, like, there's so many more players who just, just aren't as good. Um, so, yeah, it's, but nah, I don't, I'd love Lehmann. I think he'd be all right. Um, I've, I'll go back and absolutely contradict everything I've just said. But I think he'd be all right in a Jürgen Klopp team. Um, but nah, won't 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 happen. Ilkay Gundogan, there we go. That's the one who I knew I was missing. Uh, Gundogan's a baller. I, you know what? Yeah, if I could have one player f- right this second, apart from Kevin De Bruyne, I would have Ilkay Gundogan. I think he's so underrated. He's a solid player. He's a, he's a talented guy. Um, Although players mentioning KDB, he came from Wolfsburg. He was in the Prem a bit, so it's not like he was just dropped into it immediately. Bruno Silva came from Monaco. Um, so not, I think maybe made him a separate discussion that he was having there, but not a not a Bundesliga player. On that one, the top player for pressures per ninety last season in the Prem was Navi Keita with twenty four point seven. Oh, technically it was Takumi Minamino with thirty point five, but he only played two nineties in in the Premier League. So tough one there. A pressing a guy like that, Lamer. I'm not sure how much you know about him, um, Dan, but getting someone like his profile who really is just a pressing monster. For you, kind of, where do you stand on, on the lamer situation? Damn. Dan is when am I? Jack, give your opinion on it. I'll give my opinion. I think he'd be a great addition. I think that he'd be a very, very interesting. Because I, I, when I watch Liverpool play, look at how many times that right sided or left sided eight is leading the line as a press, you know, where just kind of how he, they're following the ball, the midfielder kind of drops off. Um, it, it, you, you see it so often. Um, I think we lost Dan. He'll be back in a second. Um, so, you know, I'm very interested in how that he would look in our system because he would be, a, I think, a really solid option for me personally, at least. Here's Dan. I'll, I'll give him a second to get reorient, reoriented. Dan, can you hear me all right? Yeah, I got you. I mean, can I? Uh, but what's going on is that my phone is overheating, and every time it overheats when it's charging, the whole screen goes down. So I'm back. I just unplugged it now. There we are, Dan. I was just talking about Lamer as a, a heavily pressing option um, as one of those right sided eights. Um, averages over seven pressures per game more than any of our midfielders did last season. For him as an option, would he be the kind of guy you're looking for to be one of those more defensively oriented number eights? I mean, if you're looking at, at it from a, a statistical point uh, point of view, he's a perfect type of player that we need. Uh, from the times I watched him, he hasn't really never he's never done any anything bad. He's been great for RB Leipzig, and there's a reason why Bayern Munich are desperately trying to get him. I mean, I don't know. I think Charlie knows the reason why he hasn't moved there yet. I mean, it's a valuation or something, but um, it, it seems like he was destined to, for Bayern, and it seems like. He's going to be doing grunt someone that is, like I was telling you guys before, that is just not some uh, defensive profile, but has a bit of combination of both. Uh, but honestly, if he comes in a package of two, so him and someone else, I think I will be more than happy because that's the type of profile that I was telling you guys that we need. We need someone defensive, but also we need someone that can at least add a little bit more attack to the team. So from the just the two, three times that I've seen him play, I mean, I would say yes. From the fact that Jack has given me um, all these analysis and stats, I mean, it looks like it's also a green light, but I'm, I haven't seen that much of him to say that he's the right player. But for, as of now, he seems like a good profile. How, how old is he? Do you guys, how old is uh, Lamer? I think he is like 26. 25. 25, yeah. Um, it's not even a bad, it's not even a bad uh, age. He, he can still improve. He's probably getting into the best years of his, of his career. So it, it seems like a good fitting player. Yeah. Uh, really quickly, I'll mention this. He signed a new contract, yep. so that that's not happening. Uh, I saw a few people uh, mention him, but what Dan said, uh, what what Dan was alluding to, uh, why he hasn't joined Bayern, I didn't mention it before. I think Dan Dan's phone might have died in the Ecuadorian heat, um, but he's. He, he, Bayern want him, they don't want to pay what Leipzig want. Everyone seems to be fine. Everyone seems to be fine for him to let him run his contract down. So that, that's a, a short version of it. But sorry, go on, Jack. You know, I was just going to say we can do a quick jump around, around some other options in the midfield, last 10 minutes about on stream. Um, Dan, I'm going to go to you first with this one. The guy you wanted to mention, tell us his name. 
and tell us why you think he's the best option in mid- Liverpool midfield. Absolutely. So, um, obviously, if a lot of people have been watching Brighton at the moment, you guys know that Moises Caicedo is doing incredibly well. Um, and obviously, not just because I'm half Ecuadorian, I'm trying to get this guy. <laughs> but um, if you start looking around data, players, analytics, uh, or even just the visual test, and you basically mold the perfect Liverpool player that we need at the moment, what what comes to your mind? We need a, a player that is offensive. We need a player that is strong. We need a player that is fast and that has an eye for a goal and a lot of vision and, and threat. The, the only issue is that at the moment, there's not many players like that. I mean, what do you have? N'Golo Kante, um, maybe Gundogan. A lot of people have been say, oh, I haven't seen his name. Uh, I mean, there's just not many options out there. But um, the one is obviously Moises Caicedo. I've been watching him for a couple of years now. Brighton brought him, and the only reason that they really didn't put him on the on the first team is actually because he had issues with working permits. Permits. He got into the U23s uh, when he was only 21 or 20, so that's how he was already ahead of his age. And then as soon as uh, Brighton lost uh, Bisuma, he came in, slotted right in, and he's he's getting men of the match uh, awards every single match. And I'm telling you. That's the type of profile of player that we need. Someone that can do whatever Jordan Henderson, James Melder, Fabinho does, while at the same time score goals. He has a heck of a foot. I mean, he can shoot from outside of the box. He can run as fast as anybody. Um, only issue is he's going to be his val- uh, his valuation. He just moved to Brighton last year, or a year and a half, I believe. Uh, he has a pretty long-term contract, no release clause. He's now becoming their starting player and most important player. Brighton can even come up and say, you know what, we don't want to sell him, but if you want it, give, and, give me $75 million. Um, there's no reason why not, because uh, everything's on their favor. So I think it's impossible for us to buy him unless Brighton lowered their valuation, but that's the type of player that we actually need. He will be perfect for the, for the team at the moment. So that's Dan's guy is the, the go-to midfielder. Charlie, have you got one that we haven't mentioned yet um, as your go-to? <laughs> Oh, uh, Jude Bellingham. <laughs> Look, it before we get into mine, there's like 70 people in here. Get like in the video, guys. You know, it's free, it helps us out. Like the video, subscribe to the channel if you want to be a member, like Jen as well. You know, it's only like $2.99 a month, $3.99 a month. Just helps us out if you do have some extra change lying around, but just like the video helps us out anyway. Um, look, a midfielder. Honestly, God, apart from look, apart from Jude Bellingham, I don't know. The issue is, as much as I was happy that Genie Wine Album left, I was mm-hmm. under the presumption that we were replacing him in the same summer, and we didn't, and it messed us up. Look, and I know this isn't as big as a, a discussion, but Dejan Lovren, even though he was a fourth three centre back, we didn't replace Dejan Lovren. We ended up finishing fourth because we had a centre back crisis. You know, would it have happened with Dejan Lovren? Probably, but you can point to it as well. Look, it we need three midfielders. It's as simple as that. Alex Oxley Chamberlain is leaving. Naby Keita is leaving. If they offer him a contract, it's absolutely criminal. I'm sorry. James Milner's leaving. Jordan, so there's three players leaving at the end of the contract, unless the club do something absolutely idiotic. You've got Thiago, who's injury-prone, Jordan Henderson, who is far past his best. So there's five players there you're looking at, are either gone or injury-prone or past the best. Liverpool need three midfielders. And, you know, a minimum, if we don't sign anyone this summer, we need a minimum of two. And Jurgen Klopp always bangs on about... Oh, it, it takes time for players to settle into the to the club. Well, if it takes time for players to settle into the club, why aren't you buying one of the players now? It makes no sense. Why instead of of going and buying two or three midfielders next summer, hoping that they all just hit the ground running? Why mm. aren't you buying one of them now? Buying Drew Bellingham next summer, and and you know, look, I, I the ideal the 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 sensible thing to do now. Will buy somebody who is an established player, you know, 25, you know, 24, 25, 
someone like Paqueta, who, who's an established player, he, he, he's in and around a national team, he's playing in a top league, bring him in straight away. You know, we might take a couple of months to adapt, fair enough. Next summer, you go all out for Jude Bellingham. And as well, mm-hmm. if you think, oh, let's bring in another one, you bring in, a, 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 I know Jude Bellingham is a youth player, he's young, but he, he's experienced for his age. You, you go and then buy, you go then go buy a, a youth prospect, you know, someone who's 17, 18, someone like Casado. You know, you, you, you take a risk on him and you, you don't put any pressure on him. Because the thing is, if you bring Casado in now, the amount of pressure that is going to be on him is would be stupid. And there's no way the club buy him. You know, you're bringing in a, a youngster for, for anywhere between 50 and 70 million. And, and you're, you're saying, okay, we need you to perform straight away. Which goes everything against what Klopp has said in the past. So it, it makes no sense. It's it's just like I can't every every way I look around it, I just can't wrap my head around who's who's making these decisions. Is it Julian Ward? Is it Jurgen Klopp? Is it FSG? I don't think it's FSG because I don't think FSG care that much. I think FSG put money into the club and let people do their bidding for them. They say, here's how much money you've got. You know, and we don't care. You know, we'll be in America with other stuff. You know, so that that's that's my issue. Um, Jacob Ramsey, people are saying. Again, I wouldn't say no, but it's like, if you buy Ramsey and Bellingham, they're, they're two very similar players. Um Ramsey, it, is, is he the guy from, from Villa? Aston Villa, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, he's, he's I, another kid, though, isn't it? Yeah, he's young. Um, but look, it's, there's going to be absolute mayhem if we don't start June Bellingham next summer. I am not looking forward to Twitter if that happens. Because Real Madrid now are going all in for him after losing uh, Casemiro. So, look, if we miss out on him, you know, top four is a guarantee. It has to happen this summer. If I know we're, we're look, we're three games in. It's hard to be saying this type of stuff. But did we think, you know, the season after we won the champion, the season after the we won the Premier League, would be battling for top four again? No, you know, you don't underestimate the Premier League. How many play? Look at the amount of money that's being spent in the Premier League this summer. You've got Brentford and Nottingham Forest signing Champions League class players. You've got Newcastle signing Alexander Isaac. You've got West Ham signing Paqueta. You know, it's... And we're just sitting here with our, our twiddling our thumbs, letting all these players go past. So it's... Who, who I want us to sign, I want us to sign Jude Bellingham right this second. Will that happen? No. So... Anyone with functioning legs who can pass a ball forward, please. What what is what is your guys' take on um, Leandro Perez? Uh, Perez is from from PSG. Considering it's, the, it said that he that they want to sell him for twenty million, available on the cheap. You know, I, he's just eh. he, he, doesn't, he doesn't move it for me. He's twenty eight as well. He's twenty eight. Twenty what? Twenty seven. 28 it makes no sense like like i'm sorry it just makes no sense like if we sat here and we watched all these players go by and we said leandro paredes is that guy he's 28 he's just not going to be any different than we saw him and he's just an average player for this psg team he's gonna be an average player for us so it, it would be for me it'd be very frustrating um he's in the title but i not for me i don't know dan you any different I mean, no. At this moment, I'm just trying to think about players that are, that are under 30 million that have played at the highest level, whether that's Champions League football or, or anything like that, that have played as starters or maybe are benched at the moment. And it's just very hard. Uh, if we go back to the 2016-2017 transfer rumors, maybe Mah- uh, Mahmoud Dahoud from from Dortmund, but I mean, he's not even starting from time to time. It's it's just hard at the moment, if, considering you have you have to understand one thing. Because we sit here and we complain about FSG not putting money. Um, there's there's so little that we can do. And maybe probably even club, there's so little he can do. But um, if we want a player, we need to start offering options. But what options are out there? They're under $30 million. Uh, And it's just very hard. It's very hard at the moment. And it's just we have to accept the fact that we're spending whatever we're making or we're putting money down for just like a very little amount of money. So... 
what options can we get? Is this very little outside? Unless we get Sujic uh, from from Salzburg, who look, looks to be available for 30 million or 25 million. But I mean, that's just a huge gamble. You're getting a player from the Austrian league, and I mean, it, he's young as well. So it's just so hard at the moment to choose. So I, I don't know. It's a risky situation. Is indeed. I was going to mention Sujic real quick before we get out of here. Um, 19 year old. You know, he turns turns 20 after the window, right after the window closes. For me, it's it's a weird one. It would be a big gamble, and it's just asking too much of a player to transition to the Prem. Charlie, any last thoughts on him? Any other signings? Look, it goes back to exactly what I was saying. You bring Suchik in with an established player. Yep. You, it's, it's as simple as that. Look, you can Jude Bellingham can come in as an established player because he's been at the top level since he was like 15 years old. You know, so he can come in as a top player. He's been playing in, in you know, the championships are an unbelievable league. We see how many players perform in the championship and come straight to the Premier League and adapt instantly. You know, they're, they're playing for, they're playing like over 40 games in a season, every, three days a week. So that they're used to intensity. You know, you bring in someone in from the Austrian league to play about 20 games a season. Uh, you know, so it's, you bring him in with someone who's established. You do not. It's the same as Casado. Uh, you just. It's it's a stupid move if that happens. I think you'd be a good signing, but again, it's it's who do you bring him in with? You can't bring him in on his own and expect him to to transform a, a depleted midfield and and one that fans are, are jumping on every mistake now. You know, imagine imagine he comes in for his first game and gives the ball away and you know. They concede. It's a, it's a mistake. We'd be fine with if we brought him in with somebody. But you look at that, you're like, it's a, it's a disaster waiting to happen. It's very interesting with what what happens next. Um, we can only hope midfielder is signed. It, it feels like it's just painfully obvious. It's been painfully obvious for weeks now. But if these last three results haven't been a slap in the face. I don't know what will. We may be right enough another season, which is a very sad thing to say, but um, we are at risk of that. Thank you to Charlie and Dan for coming in uh, onto today's stream. Um, I've been Jack. We will catch you on our next live video or stream. Well, that's actually a live video. Our next video or stream on the LLC transfer room. So until then, have a good day. We'll see you next.